Welcome to Salisbury University On The Air, a program highlighting the activities and the people of the campus. My name is Susan Purnell. When Chris Field Maryland Carver's Lem and Steve Ward began crafting their now famous decoys in the 1920s, they never dreamed that they would become the faces of an arts movement that has expanded well beyond the United States. In 1968, the Ward Foundation was formed to keep their legacy alive. Seven years later, it established the Ward Museum of Wildfowl Art in the Great Hall of Salisbury University's Holloway Hall. In 1992, the museum relocated to its current home next to Shoemaker Pond in Salisbury. And the foundation became an affiliated organization of Salisbury University in 2000. This year, it celebrates its 50th anniversary with a series of special events. Here to tell us about them is Laura Bottinelli, Executive Director of the Ward Museum. So welcome back, Laura. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Actually, I say back, I don't know if you've done this before. Well, we've known each other for a long yes, time. Yes, but we haven't done this. So welcome to PAC 14. Glad to be here. Yes. So we're here to talk about something really exciting today. Um, a lot of people have heard of the Ward Museum. Mm -hmm. and. and Lem and Steve Ward, I think it was, uh, were the brothers uh, that were the art, the waterfowl carvers. And tell us a little bit about their background. Okay, so Lem and Steve Ward were decoy carvers from Crisfield, Maryland, as you know, it's just down the mm -hmm. way on the Chesapeake Bay. And they became famous for their wildfowl carvings. They uh, started as barbers, um, and between haircuts, they huh. were carving decoys. And the interest in their uh, artwork continued to grow and grow. The clientele of Crisfield with the booms in, of seafood, a lot of uh, interesting and wealthy people were coming to town. And they got some pretty um, uh, important clients. So during that, they ended up being featured in National Geographic three times in their lifetime. Um, the, uh, they received honorary doctorates from Salisbury University. And Lem received the National Heritage Award, which is the highest honor an individual artist can receive. But all this came from gentlemen with um, a fourth grade education who had lived their life in the marsh and carved decoys and ultimately wildfowl sculpture that was based completely out of their experiences on the Chesapeake Bay. Wow, so that is amazing. Gosh, um, how does the Ward Museum honor their legacy now. So one of the other really remarkable things for Lem and Steve is that the Ward Foundation was established while they were alive in 1968. And that's unusual. That's mm -hmm. great. Yep. And so that is, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary mm -hmm. this year. And the biggest part of our mission is to preserve their legacy. And so the Ward Museum um, is the location in which the Ward Foundation um, does its work. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we're affiliated with Salisbury University. Right. So this connection to Lem and Steve, you know, we still work and support the community of uh, wildfowl artists across the country and around the world. But in our community, we have found that there is really a way to connect people of all ages and backgrounds to art, nature, and tradition. Mm -hmm. That's really where Lem and Steve's uh, spirit was shining. Is For them, it was carving decoys, but it was very much that connection to their local community, um, their passion for artistic creativity, and their understanding of nature. Mm -hmm. And so we find ways through our work at the museum to honor their legacy by bringing a new generation into a love of those things. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not just their work, right, mm -hmm. that's at the museum. There are other artists as well? Yep, absolutely. So. So um, in our permanent collection, um, we have uh, over 2,500 pieces of art, um, and they're representing artists from around the world. Um, oh. Wildfowl carving and through the museum's work with the World Championship, we've developed a pretty extensive collection of decorative sculptures. Um, but at the museum, we actually, through our changing exhibits, feature works of many artists who maybe aren't even bird carvers that may be uh, sculptors or painters including right now we have a really beautiful exhibit of Patrick Henry's work who's a painter from Berlin. Berlin oh yep. I love his work yeah. yes I haven't been there yet and I've got to get there. It's, it's up through uh, mid-May so okay. you should come and see it. I absolutely will I, I in fact I told uh, Patrick Henry that I would definitely get to get there and I wasn't mm -hmm. unable to come to the opening but I will be there. Yeah, it's been, it's a, it's a fabulous exhibit. So it's not just ducks, people. No, it's, no, not at all. It's all kinds of art. And so with uh, Patrick Henry's show, mm -hmm. um, we, with the winter show, we always pair it with our student art show, which is works mm -hmm. by students from across Delmarva. It's a non-juried, non-competitive uh, mm -hmm. student art show. And the theme of this year's show is poetic landscapes. Mm -hmm. So it matches with uh, the, the type of work that uh, Patrick is presenting, you know, basically reflecting on the culture and arts of the shore. 
Um, but here's a little fun did you know. Okay. So did you know um, that Steve Ward was a poet and he wrote poetry? With and, a fourth grade education. Yes, and they, Lem and Steve recited poetry and is another one. They were very artistic and creative individuals. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom of all uh, many Ward Brothers decoys and sculptures are uh, Steve's poet poems. Really? And so this idea he'd of... he carve it into... No, he would uh, like, yeah, write it. Write it on there. Okay. Um, and there's a book of poetry that we sell at the museum that's oh, Steve's I poetry. It's, that. it's all, it's very lovely. And so it's, and he's reflecting on um, the shore landscapes. He's mm -hmm. reflecting on his uh, community of Chrisfield, on life, on love. Oh, They're really beautiful. And so this idea of connecting those things from the paintings to the vision of the shore to the, the um, literary arts, it's really... I've so, yeah, there's little... so many times I did not know that. <laughs> Gosh, it wasn't very observant. Um, so you mentioned this is the 50th anniversary yes. this year. Yes. What special exhibit do you have for that? Okay. Is it is it the Patrick Henry one, or is it, there's something else coming? Well, up? all year long we've been uh, we've mm -hmm. crafted an exhibit schedule that would really uh, bring in audience um, that maybe is discovering the Ward Museum for the first time, or is uh, we're really, like bringing all the various sectors of folks who enjoy our work. So mm -hmm. we are doing a retrospective um, small exhibit on the Ward Foundation's history, and that mm -hmm. opens in April. Okay. And we're actually producing a short film that goes with that, um, that will show off um, and tell the story of our organization. Mm -hmm. um, you'll look to see that soon on our website as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that exhibit will basically be us telling our story. So after the Patrick Henry show, um, the large changing exhibit is going to be uh, Through the Artist's Eyes, A Vision of the Eastern Shore. And it's a, a combination of artists, painters, sculptors, photographers who normally are not from, the, from Del Marva that are normally not exhibiting at the Ward Museum. So it's a multi-artist show. Mm. And again, trying to engage the artist community of our region um, whom maybe it's been years since they've been able to participate in an opportunity at the museum. Mm -hmm. And then we have, for our collecting side, we have a very significant uh, show in the fall. It's uh, 50 great decoy makers before 1950. So as you know, decoys are highly collectible. Yes. And this is going to be like a knock it out of the park exhibit for those folks who have known the Ward Museum for its interest in antique decoys. So mm -hmm. all year long, we're doing these things that are engaging um, our various interested audience. And we have doing so much with students and with the student art show and other opportunities for children to be involved mm -hmm. year round. Mm. There's mm. so much to talk about there's, with you. There's more than you can I expect know. at the Ward Museum. Also in April is the Waterfowl Competition, the World Champion mm -hmm. Carving Competition and Art Festival. Tell us a little bit about that and how long that's been okay. going on. So the World Championship is entering its 48th year. So uh -huh. we've been doing the World Championship almost as long as the organization has been around and before the Ward Museum even existed. And at this point, we're bringing in artists from around the world to Ocean City to the Convention Center for our annual exhibition and competition of wildfowl art. It is the most premier event for this community of artists, and it's how the collection of the Ward Museum has grown over the years. Many of the works you see in our permanent galleries are works that had won at the World Championship in prior years. Do people um, donate them? Uh, well, the, the history of how we acquired those pieces has changed over the years, but yes, sometimes we have, we've had large bequests mm -hmm. um, from uh, collectors of wildfowl art. Mm -hmm. For a period of time, there was a purchase of uh, the winners. Um, but and right now the winners of that show are on loan to us um, for one year. So oh, that's great. So yep. that's the deal you make with mm -hmm. them. Yep. Perfect. But they're also competing for uh, accolades and at the highest levels for cash prizes. Um, so there's the world's level, which is like the premier level for the artists that are at mm -hmm. you know, the um, peak of their careers. But we have um, a youth division, um, a novice, intermediate, advanced division. Um, so there's ways for everyone to, who have an interest in this art form to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, but at the highest levels, they're competing for up to $60,000 worth of uh, overall cash prizes. Oh, you're kidding. Yep, it's a big deal. So um, where does that money come from? It comes from the registration fees okay. um, because they're registering their work. Um, um, to enter the show, and we have sponsors and donors uh -huh. that are basically helping. Do you have to go find all those donors? Oh, uh, well, the we, sponsors. The, we have a large community of people who have supported us over the years, but Gosh. yes, uh, there is a team of us who are always working to find the resources to be support. And every year, we kind of there's a little bit of adjustments that we make, mm -hmm. and um, but the show is strong at 48 years, at, and. Uh, 
it's a very important part of the museum and the foundation's work, um, mm -hmm. and it's our it's our signature event each year. Mm -hmm. Wow! Anything else going on besides that in the same at the same time? Absolutely. Connected with that? Sure. There's yeah, a there's bloody. a there's a benefit <laughs> auction. So the benefit auction uh -huh. at the, during that show um, is a chance for people to purchase art with the proceeds mm -hmm. benefiting um, the museum mm -hmm. and the um, world championship. Um, we have a dinner that honors um, our living legends, and this year we have three new inductees. Mm. Uh, Toots Lawson, who's a carver from Chrisfield, uh, um, actually worked with Lemon Steve while they were alive. David Turner, whose work you probably know, bronze sculptor, yes. signature artworks all around the country, yes. but also... I have one in my backyard. There you go. <laughs> so he'll be <laughs> honored at this yes. year. And then there's also uh, Robert Kerr, who's a carver uh, from Canada. Um, we have an international community of artists. So, oh, that's um, yeah, there's lots going on. There's a conference. If you're an educational an conference, an educational right? conference. What, and, no, what's that all about? So, um, this is think of this as like a convention for uh, these artists. So, mm -hmm. this is their professional development of the year. So, we have okay. workshops and techniques. There's uh, presentations by master artists. There's uh, stuff for uh, like uh, inter introductory lessons, but you're mm -hmm. learning from a world champion, and there's lectures and things like that about how to sell your work and, and those sorts of things. So That's you want to think about that as like you basically it's the um, uh, conference for our wildfowl carvers. Let's say I wanted to learn how to carve a duck. Mm -hmm. um, how do I get involved? Well, you can take uh, carving, I think they're calling it Carving 101 with Ross mm -hmm. Smoker at this event. Okay, um, and that's at the Civic Center in Ocean mm -hmm. City. Yes. Okay. And um, throughout the year, we have uh, introductory carving opportunities. We also have a wood carving club at the Ward Museum. It meets first and third Mondays. Um, so there's a group of carvers locally that get together. Mm -hmm. And if you walked in there and said, hey, I want to watch and learn, they're going to take you under their wing. We ask you that you be a member of the Ward Museum mm -hmm. to be in the club. And Fair enough. Yep. Yeah, but as a local, that is an opportunity that you have if you wanted to do that. What does it cost to become a member? $35 to be um, a, not, an individual. Then amazing. there's family and mm -hmm. higher levels mm -hmm. with different perks. When and where is this year's annual Del Marvelous? I love that word. Oh, Del Marvelous Festival. The Del Marvelous Festival. Festival is at the Ward Museum on June 23rd. Uh -huh. And so for many years, we've been celebrating um, other aspects of uh, our region's cultural heritage. And that's actually how I started at the Ward Museum was oh. as our folklorist. And um, so we've been studying the cultural history of Delmarva and doing lectures and events. So the Del Marvelous Festival kind of pulls that all together. So there'll be um, presentations from whether they're uh, boat captains, skipjack captains, um, crab picking demonstrations, Smith Island cake making demonstration. Mm -hmm. Every year the Del Marvelous it's Festival. It's right there. It's at the museum, at the museum. using our classroom facilities mm -hmm. and our grounds. Mm -hmm. So depending on um, who is uh, brought together um, each year the um, program is different and it's really exciting um, we all ages all ages two years ago we had the Chincoteague pony drill team come up and do like a, so it's different we uh, this year's program is still evolving um, but you can watch our website to see which uh, signature tradition mm -hmm. bearers uh, from the eastern shore will come together and show off local culture and history oh I mean that's so exciting mm -hmm. I can't believe I've it's, missed this it's in the very past. I've fun. never been there how about the art in nature photo festival when's that so that's in August okay. so now we're going to think about lemon I seed. really don't know when you sleep yeah <laughs> we have a very uh, productive team over at the Ward right. Museum and, and anyone can volunteer and help us if you're like this. Good to great, know. Yeah. Because a lot of volunteer effort goes into making these happen. So the photo festival came out of this idea is that we know there's people who love about love art and nature, but maybe aren't carving decoys. Mm -hmm. What do they have? They have a digital camera. Mm -hmm. And they're very much connected to our mission and the sort of legacy of Lem and Steve, which is enjoying and documenting and celebrating the beauty of the outdoors. Mm -hmm. So this photography festival is we have about a thousand photographs that are submitted each year. They're displayed in the museum on the walls and are up for the three days and judged and competed for uh, prizes and awards. Mm -hmm. uh, but really it's been a way for us to very much broaden the group of people who feel a home at the Ward Museum because you probably t are an amateur nature photographer in some right. Have you? Well, I live many... on the river and I love to take the pictures mm -hmm. of the herons when it's... they're just out on our dock. So not that I've taken great pictures, but some of them have been pretty, yeah. pretty good. So say I am an amateur photographer and I want to be a part of this, how do I become a part you of it? You get the rules off our website, you okay. print your piece because it is not a digital entry, it is a physical entry. 
if you're local, you can bring them into the museum mm -hmm. um, during our registration period. And if you're away, you can mail them in. And then we do the rest. We exhibit them and then mm -hmm. they're judged. And, you know, with a thousand photographs in, the idea is it's about the exhibition of the art mm -hmm. um, because you, you there's only so many awards to go around. But do you, you hang a thousand photos? We do. I like That's to, a lot of work. I like to say if a picture is worth a thousand words and there's a thousand photographs at the Ward, Ward Museum, there's over a million things to talk about when you're in the um, galleries that uh -huh. weekend. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's God. a temporary so display. The They're not framed. End of August or? Mid-August. Mid-August. Second, second weekend in August. Oh, Yep. Good, good, good. I hope all those people that I know that are really good photographers will, will enter that. Yeah, it's, it's, that's got to be it's a really fun. show. It's, yeah. it's, um, if, if you win, what do you get? Um, I would want to consult the prize package. Um, okay. That's, that's going to be published with our rule guide. Okay. Um, there's, it, at the Grand Champion, there's cash. There's it? usually um, some photography gear that we mm -hmm. have donated by local oh, that's a good local idea. sponsors. Mm -hmm. So, and there's, um, like a, there's a youth, an amateur, and a professional division, and there's okay. prize packages that um, are awarding the highest levels of each of those. So besides uh, basically a competition, is there anything else that goes on? Oh, there's a conference that weekend too oh, for is there? photographers. Mm -hmm. There's excursions, um, like little photography classes that go out to the beautiful little nooks and crannies of the shore. Mm. Yeah, so it's a we call it a festival. So there's oh, it's great. full of life. And then finally, there's the Chesapeake Wildfowl, I can't say the word wildfowl, I've tried and tried mm -hmm. this whole week, Wildfowl Expo. You got it. Where's that? That's at the museum as that's well. That's also yeah. at the museum. <laughs> and so it's on our grounds. Mm -hmm. um, that's in its 21st year, mm -hmm. and it's a decoy, uh, it's a celebration of waterfowling. Um, there's a decoy competition, there's a buy, sell, and trade, we have special exhibitions, we have demonstrations from decoy mm. carvers, but it's, um, you maybe have uh, noticed that the Eastern Shore loves its waterfowling heritage, and mm. there's more to it than just carving decoys. So the Wildfowl Expo is really, really a showcase of the, the, the full package of what mm. um, the shore's um, waterfowling culture is about. You say the buy, sell, and trade. So, for example, um, I noticed when I bought my moved into my mom and dad's house, they have lots of decoys mm -hmm. all around. Um, I have no idea what they're worth or if there's any market for them. Is that a that place you, I would go? You would, and there's probably about 10 individuals that are reputable as uh, decoy uh, appraisers or dealers mm -hmm. that would be able to tell you about your uh, what you have. Mm -hmm. um, and they're exhibiting on October 13th. Um, wow. So yeah. So that, oh gosh, it's, it sounds to me like every month you've got something. We've talked April, June, I think we skipped July, August, September, October. Oh yeah, and there's summer camps during the summer for the kids. Uh -huh. And there's year, we, we do weekly programs, like we have drop-in um, art programs for children. We do bird watching every Tuesday morning. So there's always something to do and you should just follow our Facebook page or check out the museum on its website. And we got I'm gonna friend you today. I've okay. got to, to become good. a part of that good. Facebook page. Uh, tell me also about the Golden Goose Reception, okay. which is, I guess, in connection with this whole 50th anniversary. It, it is. So it is on October 12th, mm -hmm. and it, so that's the Friday night before our uh, Wildfell Expo. So mm -hmm. all of our uh, waterfowling community is basically traveling to the mm -hmm. area for that other event. So we're going to do our big 50th anniversary celebration mm -hmm. on the Friday night. There? And at the museum. Mm -hmm. um, it's a save the date right now. And we know that there's going to be food and drink and an auction and a celebration. It's going to be the place to be um, on the shore related to celebrating local history and culture. Mm -hmm. um, if you, um, we are soliciting um, donations for the auction. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, anyone listening as an interest in that you can just be in touch with me at the so museum. that's another thing I could do mm -hmm. with the Absolutely. decoys that I you know there's just so many decoys yeah. one can have um, that I have is donate them yeah and, and then we some of we know everything that comes in we look at to see if it's something that may be suitable for our collection mm -hmm. and then we the people who are uh, making those presentations to us we say well would you like us to use this to benefit the museum and it may be then right. put into that auction and non-cash donations are actually a big part of how a museum is is, is operates because mm -hmm. there's the collecting side to make sure we're actually building our collection mm -hmm. and filling in gaps of things um, that we need to tell our story and then there's the that people know that um, being able to donate objects to, so that they can be sold to benefit mm -hmm. um, if it's if it's not in the collecting realm is very important mm -hmm. too so 
I know you mentioned art classes, and I know there's some other ongoing activities. Yes. Um, wine tastings, I think, is one. And then you also have a holiday quarter auction. Yes. Tell us a little bit about those activities. So um, throughout the year, so the classes, we work with um, painters, photographers that are for like professional level art opportunities to be able mm -hmm. to learn from a master artist at the museum. And your best way to, pay, to find those is going to be in Panorama or on the mm -hmm. museum's website and you would register for those. Um, and then I talked about we had our drop-in art classes for right. families which mm -hmm. is a free opportunity free every Wednesday. Um, that's drop-in art juniors meant for really littles. Mm -hmm. um, and then third Saturdays we do drop-in art um, which in, which has a signature artist that's teaching a, an art class uh, for families. Um, but you mentioned other things wine like the wine tastings, tastings and, the, and the quarter uh, mm -hmm. auction. So uh, those are primarily developed as mini fundraisers for the museum, okay. ways to um, people who want to get together for food and drink and fun mm -hmm. um, and to be able to support the museum. So the proceeds from those events are meant to support the operations of the museum. Mm -hmm. And we have a various and variety of schedules that happen um, year round of those types of, of moments. Um, now, I was there recently at a wedding, mm -hmm. and I noticed that, in fact, I think you gave me the tour oh. at, at, at that point, of all of the new building yes. uh, enhancements. Those were, I guess, the result of some major donations. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about those. So last year, we finished uh, the expansion of the buildings to support the John A. Lukemeyer Sr. and Thomas F. Mullen Jr. Legacy Center. Um, we also, mouthful. Yes, but an important mouthful. <laughs> you got it, yeah. though. <laughs> and we also renovated the Richard A. Henson um, Education Center, mm -hmm. and we renovated the Victor Oristano Meeting Room. So our entire campus has been, we've done the fundraising and enhanced the facility. There's um, this new waterfront classroom on the pond where Beautiful. people can, we, we use it as a classroom, but people have rented it for weddings and for other types of celebrations. Mm -hmm. We have community partners that are using it, including folks like the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. doing some of their signature events there. And it's a beautiful private meeting space on Shoemaker Pond. Um, this spring, we're finishing the grounds, so that way the living classroom and enhancements that mm -hmm. will carry out throughout the back of the property were, will be finished. That was supported in part by the Purdue Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just been a way that we're marrying um, the indoor and outdoor experience into this beautiful, seamless um, uh, yeah, I noticed that. So you have a patio right behind mm -hmm. the space where we had the wedding. Um, so I guess if it had been in the summer, you could spill out onto that yep. patio, which is right there mm -hmm. on the pond, So and, and have an indoor-outdoor event as Exactly. Well. And there's a sculpture garden that we've added, mm -hmm. eight new pieces of sculpture to our that. sculpture garden this uh, as part of the renovations. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's meant to be connect the art, nature, and tradition. Uh, Can anyone rent these rooms? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Yep. Just call up and say... Yep. I'm doing a wedding or I'm having a yep. special event. There's there's fees and there's insurance sure, requirements of and all that. But yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a facility that we would be able to work with folks who are looking to do private affairs. That's um, a good way of making mm -hmm. money for the yep. uh, museum as well. Yep. And there are a number of places in our community that um, are little secret gems like that. Where That is a you, secret gem. Mm -hmm. You're right. Because I mean, I, I as I walked around it that day, I thought, oh, I mean, why... Isn't there a wedding here every weekend? Mm -hmm. This is this is the perfect place. And we'll say business is picking up. Um, good, good. <laughs> I'm, just, I, I'm sure you it's had a, to hire extra people for that. It's been we've been uh, it's been a growth year for the museum. Mm -hmm. um, our team is incredibly resilient and vital and strong, and it's been remarkable to see our business really uh, bloom and evolve with the opportunities that have come mm -hmm. to us. Um, in the same year, our education program has expanded. Its service number is up another, I think, like 25 or 30 percent this year. Mm -hmm. um, we've been added an after-school program into our repertoire. Mm -hmm. So um, we're a place to watch. If you want to get involved, this is the year to get involved. Come by to events, right. start to volunteer, just pay attention to what's happening. Um, it's really, it's a beautiful place. It's got a lot of uh, spirit. It's our 50th anniversary, so. So much going on. I, I, you mentioned the educational aspect. Mm -hmm. Do you do outreach? Do you go to the local schools or do you invite them in? Both, both, okay. both. Um, so there's regular um, activities like uh, field trips that come to the museum. Mm -hmm. I mentioned this after school program we're running with Wacombico Public Schools. Um, we do outreach beyond into Worcester and Somerset schools. Okay. And so there's a, it's, it's multifaceted. Um, mm. Yeah. So 
for, the, for those who are interested in learning more, and we have you know talked about so much here that it, somebody would have to be taking furious notes yeah. to, to understand it all, where will they go for information about all the many events we've talked about, particularly connected to the 50th anniversary? You go to wardmuseum.org. Easy enough. Yep. And I would encourage people that really want to stay connected to come become a member of the museum. At $35, you can join our membership. It's a bargain. You'll, you'll get our mailings, you'll be connected, and you'll mm -hmm. be supporting our mission, and mm -hmm. you'll be able to hear about year round how to stay involved. No, I think that's great. And I, you've have taken a lot of your time, but I just want to ask one, one final question, and that's if Lem and Steve were alive today, what would they be saying about the last 50 years of the Ward Foundation? That's a great question. Um, I would say that they would be thrilled and honored that so many people have remained connected and passionate, passionate about arts and culture. I think they would be excited to see that um, so many um, community organizations are supporting this work, and most importantly, Salisbury University. Mm -hmm. um, I think they would be in thrilled to see this next generation of young learners appreciating the outdoors and seeing that creativity and the outdoors can be part of a really healthy life. I think it's great that Salisbury University jumped on the opportunity mm -hmm. to become um, the home of the War Museum, and it has just given back so much to our community over the past years. Thank you for being here today, for sharing all it's of the shared success <laughs> excitement that's going on this year with your 50th anniversary. Thank Always you. great to talk to you. Laura. Nice to be here. Uh -huh. Appreciate it. For our guests who have never been to the Ward Museum or World Carving Championship, I strongly encourage you to pay a visit. And for those who have been, go back. There's always something new to see or do at the Ward Museum. And now, Here's a look at other activities scheduled on the campus in April.
particularly excited about one of the events on the calendar you just saw. SU's Bobby Byron Theater Program presents Hairspray, the award-winning Broadway musical from April 6th to the 8th and 13th to the 15th. Based on the original John Waters movie, it's an upbeat look at one of my favorite eras, the 60s. It's set in Baltimore and has a positive message to share. The students and others involved are just wonderful. I hope you'll join me in taking in one of its six fun performances. Again, I'd like to thank my guest, Laura Bontanelli, Executive Director of Salisbury University's Ward Museum of Wildfowl Art. I'm Susan Purnell, and this has been Salisbury University on the Air. Thank you for watching.